Featuring Rogue's iconic over-the-top build quality and bold aesthetics, the Manta Ray is undeniably one of the baddest looking adjustable FID benches to emerge in the market. But does that mean that it's right for you and your home gym? Stick around and find out. Before we get started, I am Matt Pendergraf, and if you're new to the channel, consider arm wrestling that subscribe button. That felt lame, but I like it. And for even more home gym related content, be sure to follow me over on Instagram, as well as check out my website where I do written product reviews, offer up exclusive discount codes, and it's where I house all of my affiliate links if you're into supporting all of this. So prior to delving too deeply into the Manta Ray, I do wanna make it known that Rogue did send this bench to me for review and feedback purposes, Basically, they reached out to me via Instagram, and naturally, I jumped at the opportunity. I felt like it was necessary to verbally disclose this information to you, just in case the words review item, laser cut into the back adjustment, didn't make that abundantly clear. So with everything on the table and out in the open, let's dive head first into this Manta Ray adjustable bench review. In my opinion, the Manta Ray is well positioned within Rogue's adjustable bench lineup as it does an excellent job blending together what I feel are the most desirable aspects of both the 3.0 series and the AB3 while also introducing its own distinct style. Similar to the 3.0, the Manta Ray boasts a ladder style adjustment system for both its backrest and seat pad with approximately one inch of separation between the two. Additionally, Additionally, both feature a three-leg low-profile front foot design with an integrated horizontal handle and a UHMW protected kickstand at the rear. In contrast, however, to the 3.0, the Manta Ray is equipped to accommodate a foot catch, enabling users to perform decline movements such as sit-ups and presses. Although Rogue's implementation of the decline feature differs slightly from the AB3, the underlying concept is essentially the same in that it has a built-in receiver at the head of the bench designed to hold a leg roller attachment in place via a pop pin. It's important to note that the leg roller attachment is an optional accessory, therefore it's not included and must be purchased separately from the bench. That being said, I'm not really sure why someone buying the bench wouldn't just go ahead and purchase the leg roller attachment anyways, because it basically serves as a key to unlocking the Manta Ray's full potential but obviously that's ultimately up to the user and whatever their needs are. So now that I briefly discussed how the Manta Ray differs from Rogue's other adjustable bench offerings, let's talk specs and features. The bench has an overall length of 57 inches and stands at a height of 17 and a half inches. Its rear foot measures just under 25 inches, while the front foot measures 12 inches in width and features a unique Manta Ray shaped design. This low profile wider front foot design found on the Manta Ray is quite ingenious in my opinion, as it not only provides greater stability while in the decline position, it ensures that it's not gonna interfere with the user's feet when benching. Moving up to the top of the bench, the seat pad is 12 inches long, while the backrest measures just over 39 inches in length and 12 inches in width which is the same width as the pads found on the AB3 and an inch wider than the 11 inch pads found on the adjustable bench 3.0. Now we'll delve into greater detail about these pads in a moment as there is a lot to say about them. And like myself, I anticipate many of you to be primarily interested in this aspect of the bench. The bench's frame is constructed of three x four seven gauge steel and is currently only being offered in Rogue Signature MG Black Powder Coat. That is right, you heard me correctly. You can get this bench in any color you want as long as it's black. Yeah, I don't know if Rogue has plans to release this in different colorways like they do their 3.0 series. It's something that I hope happens, but only time will tell. Now the fact that this bench is made from 3x4 7 gauge steel is truly incredible, especially when you consider that Rogue employs 2x2 and 2x3 11 gauge steel on their AB3 and 3x3 11 gauge steel on their 3.0, both of which are already incredibly sturdy benches. Just in case you're not familiar with steel thicknesses, the lower the gauge, the thicker the steel. So essentially what that means is the steel that they're using on this Manta Ray bench is nearly twice as thick as what they're using on their AB3 and 3.0 series. Let that sink in. The more you know, this is supposed to be a rainbow. Uh, forget it. While the use of thicker steel may result in an overall more robust and stable bench, it has also increased the overall weight of the product, which may or may not appeal to some people. Coming in at a whopping 140 pounds, the Manta Ray is easily the heaviest bench that I own and probably the heaviest bench I have ever used. Despite its weight, however, the Manta Ray is surprisingly easy to maneuver and not as unwieldy as one might think. Now, I'm not sure if this is due to the low and outward positioning of the handle on the front of the bench in relation to its body, or if I'm just making stuff up in order to sound cool in front of my friends, but I will say that I am pleasantly surprised every time I have to lift this bench up and into a standing position. So while I'm on the subject, the handle on my bench is a 3D printed prototype, whereas on the production model, it's gonna be an injection molded handle. At the end of the day, we're talking about plastic. When you're paying a premium price, you kind of expect a premium product all the way around. 
and plastic just isn't it for me at least. I would rather see a metal knurled handle here, especially given since right above it on the seat adjustment is a metal knurled handle. So when you see that and you kind of, you see what could have been down here and it's like, it's so frustrating. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's just me being picky, but it's something I wanted to point out to you. So yeah. Now integrated into the frame of the bench is a ladder style system for adjusting both the backrest and the seat pad. I personally prefer ladder systems as it allows for quick and easy one-handed adjustments unlike pot pin systems. Of course, this is ultimately subjective and based on personal preferences. So what makes the ladder system found on the Manta Ray so unique is the fact that it is built directly into the frame utilizing machine UHMW rather than the typical metal add-on brackets seen on all other ladder style benches. By building it directly into the frame, Rogue was able to increase the number of incline and decline positions while maintaining an overall cleaner aesthetic. The Manta Ray bench offers five seat settings ranging from negative 20 to 30 degrees and 10 back settings ranging from zero to 85 degrees. Rogue has also added laser cut degree markings on both the top and the front side of the frame, which is a nice departure from the side markings typically found on other benches. At the back of the bench, you'll find a UHMW padded kickstand allowing for upright storage and a set of Rogue's premium caster wheels. And finally, installed onto the bottom of the bench are rubber discs to protect the floor and reduce the chance of any possible slippage. Circling back to the bench pads, they are quite firm, which I personally prefer, and they feature a grabber style vinyl exterior, which is the same material being utilized on the Thompson fat pads. And if you aren't familiar with this material, it has a premium rubber-like texture to it, making accidental slippage a thing of the past. Basically, once you're in a position, you stay locked in a position until the lift is over. So prior to utilizing this grabber style vinyl, from my understanding, Rogue was originally contemplating using a version of their premium texture foam pad that can be found on the 3.0 bench. While these premium foam pads look and feel nice, they do fall short in providing adequate grip, which is exactly what I told Rogue. Fortunately, Rogue was extremely receptive and responded positively by swapping from production over to this new grabber style vinyl, effectively eliminating the issue. Since then, they have shipped me production samples of the new pads, which is what I currently have on my bench, and they are phenomenal. As far as the Manta Ray's intended purpose and who I think it's targeted at, I see the Manta Ray as having the potential to replace the AB3. Its superior aesthetics and functionality make it an overall better choice in my opinion, and I wouldn't be surprised if Rogue eventually phases out the AB3 in favor of the Manta Ray. Honestly, it's difficult for me to understand why someone would choose the AB3 over the Manta Ray given the ladder style adjustment system, the more narrow seat gap, the sturdier construction, and the fact that the Manta Ray ships at a reduced flat rate, which technically makes it the more cost-effective option in comparison to the AB3. I guess if you happen to find pleasure in a pop pin system and you're not particularly bothered by the outdated design of the AB3, it might be a good option for you, but... Uh, also, because of its over-the-top build quality and much higher price point, I tend to view the Manta Ray as being more suitable for commercial settings rather than residential. Unless you just want the absolute best and cannot go without decline work, I feel that the Rogue's 3.0 line is probably the more practical solution for most individuals. Obviously, this is just my opinion and it shouldn't stop you from making whatever decision is best for you and your needs. As I've stated in previous review videos, how and where people choose to spend their money when it comes to gym equipment ultimately depends on what they value most. For some, that's gonna be trying to find the absolute best adjustable bench that money can buy, while others may choose to skimp out in this area and invest elsewhere. At the end of the day, it's all going to boil down to personal preference, and in my opinion, having a variety of options and different price points available to us as consumers should never be looked down upon. Simply put, if this bench isn't right for you, then move on to something that better aligns with your interest and your budget. It probably goes without saying at this point, but I'm clearly a fan of this bench, and while it certainly isn't perfect, I do think that Rogue did an amazing job in the designing of it. Like most all Rogue products, the Manta Ray is complete overkill for the average gym goer and probably even the most hardcore of enthusiasts, but that's exactly why I'm drawn to it. I can confidently say that this is the most robust adjustable bench that I've ever had the pleasure of using. Basically, this bench rocks, and I don't mean that in a literal sense because this thing does not move. Whether it's in a flat position or an incline, it doesn't budge at all. That's it. I am done. I appreciate you watching the video and I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you have any questions for me, be sure to drop those in the comment section below. I'm also going to be including a link to my written review of this product as well as where you can buy it in the description. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in purchasing one for yourself. Other than that, till next time, I don't know what, till next time, rabbit teeth.